Welcome back to the studio. You're watching Eye on Africa here on France 24. I'm Shona Bhattacharya. Let's take a look at our top stories in this edition. A painful domino effect as the World Bank warns of the lowest growth levels in 20 years in sub-Saharan Africa, mainly due to troubles in powerhouses South Africa and Nigeria. Smaller countries like Benin are feeling the pinch. Preventing the spread of a mysterious disease, close to two dozen people in Niger have died from Rift Valley fever, a viral illness with no known cure, and health authorities are hoping to educate at-risk populations to avoid more deaths. And from aspiring accountant to opera singer, South Africa's Pretty Yende is releasing her debut album, aptly named A Journey. Slower growth in sub-Saharan Africa. A World Bank report says growth in 2016 is projected to fall to 1.6 percent, the lowest level in more than two decades. That forecast mainly reflects poor performance in South Africa and Nigeria that make up half of the region's economic output. But other countries that depend on the two powerhouses are being hit indirectly. Manuel Landé, Fiacre Kinu and Emmanuel Soji report from Benin, where more than a third of fiscal revenue depends on Nigeria. At this private school, one of the best in Benin, the classrooms have stayed practically empty since the new school year started. The management and technology courses are normally filled by 800 Nigerian students. But since the currency in Nigeria dropped in value by 50 percent, only 100 students have come back. We weren't able to collect the funds the students owe us. They were waiting every day for the Naira to climb, but it's still in deep decline. They couldn't pay us, so they left. Benin's principal resource is Nigeria's wealth. One of the hardest hit sectors in the English speaking country is the car import business from Europe or the United States. Before the economy crashed in the continent's biggest oil producing country, 90% of customers here were Nigerian. We've been in the car business for 12 years, and it's the first time we've felt this. We've lost 70% of our revenue. Before the fall of the Naira, we sold five or six vehicles every day. But now, if you sell just one a month, you have to thank God. Due to the collapse of the vehicle re-export sector, the government of Benin witnessed a loss of more than 45 million euros in customs charges in a year, or even twice that if other merchandise re-imported to Nigeria is considered. The situation in Nigeria today is likely to persist. The Naira is likely to stabilize at an extremely low rate. Whereas the CFA franc is not a flexible currency, whose rate is final, pegged once and for all on the euro. This means that our ability to compete will be threatened for a long time. 90% of Benin's foreign trade is pegged to Nigeria's market. All industrial activities in the francophone country are also threatened. They face direct competition from industry in Nigeria, which has become an extremely competitive sector. Partially off the hook, the former leader of Burkina Faso, Blaise Compaoré, will not be facing prosecution for treason and breach of the constitution due to a judicial void. That's according to the country's high court. Compaoré was ousted from power following a popular uprising in October 2014 and is now living in Ivory Coast. However, he is still wanted for his role in the deadly crackdown on those protesting his regime as well as for his connection with the assassination of his predecessor, Thomas Sankara, in 1987. Calling out, Senegal's government, uh, calling out Senegal's government over human rights abuses. Several organizations, including Amnesty International, are calling for justice reform. They're denouncing long-term interim detentions, calling for a maximum of two years for criminal charges. Overcrowded prisons are being blamed for the deadly mutiny in a prison last week, and the Senegalese government says it wants to find alternatives to sentences that call for less than six months in jail. Meanwhile, rights groups are also denouncing a ban on demonstrations, warning of a freeze on civil liberties. We are in danger of creating a policy of silence, that's to say, shut your mouth and be quiet. 
in a nation that calls itself democratic, in a country that boasts of being an example of African democracy. We are going backwards fast, and it's time for all Senegalese citizens to rise and remind Macky Sall of this. Ongoing anger over rising tuition fees in South Africa. Protesters continue to demonstrate in Johannesburg this Friday. The Congress of South African Students marched to the city's stock exchange to demand that international companies support the right to free education in the country. On Thursday, President Jacob Zuma called for calm and said he was seriously disturbed by the violence at protests the day before when police fired rubber bullets and arrested at least 11 students in Grahamstown in Eastern Cape Province. Warning of a growing epidemic in Niger. Rift Valley fever is a viral disease that mainly affects animals but can also infect humans who come in direct or indirect contact with the blood or organs of animals carrying the virus. Health workers say at least 21 people have died from it in the past month in the western part of the country. Laurent Berstecker has the story. Battling to contain an outbreak of Rift Valley fever. The potentially deadly and highly contagious disease has killed over 20 people in Niger since late August. Health authorities recently teamed up with the Lima, the Alliance for International Medical Action, to set up an emergency treatment center, as well as mobile clinics in villages across the country to raise awareness of the virus. In the beginning, everyone thought that they had malaria, and the people here were treating it using traditional medicine. Thankfully, the Alima NGO came and has helped us a lot with the situation. Rift Valley fever can cause severe bleeding and blindness and can often be fatal. It's transmitted through mosquitoes or animals and mostly affects rural populations such as farmers and herders. With no known vaccine or specific treatment, prevention remains the most effective way to battle the epidemic. Stepping up their awareness campaign, Niger health authorities were present at the Festival of Nomads earlier this month, a yearly gathering of Tuareg and Wadabe tribes in the country's northwest. We took advantage of this festival, which brings rural populations together, to sensitize and raise awareness on the prevention of this disease. Niger's health ministry recently released a series of recommendations to avoid infection. These include boiling raw milk before drinking and properly burying animal corpses. Continuing its expansion on the African continent, the world's biggest social network, Facebook, unveiled a new version in Fulani to cater to the 25 million Africans who speak the language. Facebook is now available in 101 languages, eight of them African, Somali, Afrikaans, Hausa, Kenya, Rwanda, Swahili, Tamazight, and Malagasy. Meanwhile, in Uganda, the government has announced it will be providing free Wi-Fi in the capital, Kampala, as well as in Entebbe, starting Sunday. However, it will only be available outside office hours, and according to the Minister of Information and Communication Technology, some sites will be blocked. The first time Pretty Yende heard opera, she was a teenager. It was playing in the background of a television ad and it transformed her life. Today, after years of work and practice, the South African is an opera singer in her own right, performing around the world. At 31, she's releasing her debut album called A Journey. <laughs> Growing up, Priti Yende dreamed of being an accountant. But when she heard opera for the first time on a TV ad, she knew she'd found her true calling. When I heard the music, the beauty and the joy that I felt in those 10 seconds, I knew I could do that because it's human. I felt it even without knowing that it is humanly possible. And so when I was told it was humanly possible, I said, well, teach me. Yende joined the choir at 16, and the young soprano has never looked back. 
Her talent and perseverance soon propelled her to the international stage as one of the rising stars of classical opera. Pretty Ende just released her debut album after seven years of performing around the globe. Aptly named A Journey, it showcases the highlights of a career that began in a South African township and went all the way to New York's Metropolitan Opera. The first time I opened my mouth and sang at the Met, it felt like the whole Metropolitan Opera House welcomes my voice. It's, it was like it was, it was saying, we love you. Yende regularly performs in South African villages to raise awareness about classical music. The 31-year-old singer still has one dream to realize, inspiring others to follow in her footsteps. And that's the end of this edition. Do stay tuned. There's more news coming up on France 24. Stay with us.